Out of all the specialty interests in computers and tech that are possible, the people who obsess over keyboards are the people I relate to the least. Man, these people get just seriously obsessed by it, and I don't quite get it, to be honest. Oh, sure, I like a nice keyboard. I need a nice keyboard. I spend many hours at a keyboard using a keyboard, and I expect many of you can relate using a bad keyboard is a particularly unpleasant thing to do to yourself. I like a keyboard that's pleasant to use, has a nice feel. I work a lot in dimly lit settings, as many gamers and video editors do, so I like having my keys backlit, and I like having RGB backlighting for it so I can customize them. And I like a 10 keyless layout to save space on my desktop, and because I never really use the numpad anyway, but a 60% compact is a little bit too reduced, considering how often I use the F keys and some other keys that get second tier treatment on the more compact layout. So, mechanical. 10 keyless, RGB backlit, kind of on my top of my checklist for a good keyboard. And there's like seven gajillion keyboard options out there these days in a range of sizes and layouts and extra bells and whistles and media controls and USB hubs even. And of course, switches, everything from basic membrane to mechanical to recently even optical switches have started to become way more popular. And the utterly countless variations of mechanical switches can be baffling to choose from for a, well, a, a normal person. But even with all that choice, there are people out there who still go as far as to literally build their own keyboards, installing each individual switch by hand and each keycap one by one into a chassis, just so they can have a perfectly bespoke keyboard solution for themselves. It's... I feel it's a bit too obsessive, but I also feel like if I ever did it myself, I have the personality type that would fall into the trap of becoming quite obsessed by it, at least for a little while. So I'm kind of scared to as well. But hello again, I am Blunty. Please do feel free to let me know exactly what kind of keyboard person you consider yourself to be in the down below comment section. While you're on the way down there, make sure you're subbed and the bell and the thumb and all that kind of stuff because the YouTube robot brain demands it of us. But this, this is a pre-built keyboard from Glorious, a PC enthusiast targeted brand. I've been using one of their wireless mouses for a while now and recently published a long-term review on it. And I quite like it. So when it came time to replace my daily driver keyboard on my main rig, I decided to see what Glorious can do with a keyboard. Spoiler alert, much like the Glorious Model O wireless mouse, I found it to be very solidly built, quality feeling, and for a price that doesn't feel abusively bloated. And if any of you have looked at prices for fancy keyboards, you know what I'm talking about. Bloody hell, how do they get away with it? But I got this for just over 100 American Biden bucks. And while it's not hard to get a decent mechanical switch keyboard with RGB for that kind of price, something in particular that caught my eye with this particular one was it's one of the most affordable, at least from a brand I've started to trust, that offers hot swap switches. So if you manage to break or wear out a switch, you can literally just pull it out of the board and you can replace it directly with any standard switch from several popular choices from third party options like Gatorin or Cherry or Calith. But it also means if you decide to switch to a different switch, pun fully intended, haha, well, I'm a wordsmith, for a different feel, something quieter, something firmer, or you want to mix and match. So you want to put all your, say, for example, you want to put all your common gamer buttons on a different kind of switch than all the rest of the buttons, for example. You can do that too. Not entirely sure what that would do to the common typing experience, but for gaming, it'd be good. The switches pre-installed on this one are Gatorin Browns, described as having a smooth, slooping rise that leads to a subjectively pleasant tactile event. Till this point, both my daily driver keyboard from Razer and the Corsair wireless one I use for my gaming rig both use cherry red switches, which are very linear, don't have any tactile bump at the activation point, and are quiet and smooth. Just to give you the point of reference that I'm comparing from. I've never used Getter and Browns before. I kind of bought them on faith, blind, and hoping that I would like them. But they're reasonably close to the Cherry Reds in weight, but with a lightly more obvious tactile bump at the activation point. It's not clicky, but you kind of feel it if you're gentle with it. And they have a somewhat stronger return spring. So while they are tactile, they're not as obviously clicky as something like the Cherry Blues, but also noticeably louder and more tactile than what I was using. They're quite light to use, and I'm still getting used to them, but I'm starting to like them. Didn't really love them on first impression, I tweeted about that, but but I've now spent several hours very heavily using the keyboard, and yeah, they're growing on me pretty quickly.
still though, it's nice to know that I can relatively quickly and easily just swap them out for cherry blues or whatever else if I decide against them. The rest of the keyboard is very pleasant. The main body plate is sandblasted aluminium. Well, actually, Glorious is based in Texas, so they're American, so it's sandblasted aluminum with a slight polish. <laughs> Sorry, Americans, I can't help myself. It's got a slight polished chamfer at the circumference, which is very nice looking, in my opinion, and minimalistic, beautiful. The switches and keys are raised above the plate and sit clean and proud, which I also like. And there's absolutely no visible branding at all, which, again, I also like. In use, it feels very solid. There's absolutely no flex or bounce or sponginess from the plate at all. It feels rock goddamn solid. And while I'm yet to really understand why keyboard reviewers do this, but if you pick it up and try to twist it, it doesn't twist so much. Is that an important feature in a keyboard? It must be, because all the pretentious wanks who specialize in keyboard reviews keep doing it for some reason. Maybe I'm using keyboards wrong. I don't know. In any case, the whole thing feels minimal and solid and classy, even clean. In the box, they give you both a keycap puller, which snaps away under the keyboard itself, nice and convenient, hard to lose it that way, and a key switch puller, which doesn't snap away somewhere convenient, so you're going to lose that damn thing, or at least I will, I'm sure. The cable is a reasonably heavy braided USB type. It is detachable, which I love, but I don't love the cable in general. I think I'll replace it. It's a bit too stiff for my tastes. So it keeps sort of getting in the way as I slide my keyboard around on my desk. Because I do frequently slide my keyboard towards me and away from me, depending on what else I'm doing in front of me uh, on the desk at the time. Or I'll move it away and bring in the gaming keyboard when I'm gaming, things like that. So, yeah, having a, having a pliant cable on the keyboard is kind of an important thing for me and how I use it. And this cable is anything but pliant. Also in the box are a couple of alternate keycaps, a standard escape key to replace the bright red ascend key that's pre-installed in its place. I like the ascend key, it's a nice little brand touch without going too brand heavy on the keyboard itself, but they are nice enough to give you a standard black escape key if you don't want the ostentation of an ascend key. But if you do want slightly more ostentation or slightly more branding, they also give you a glorious logo key to replace the Windows key, if you like. Or you're a Linux zealot and hate the fact that there's a Windows logo on your keyboard. There is some software for control. You can select or customize lighting configurations and set macros and the like. But you don't need the software installed to use the keyboard. You don't even need to have it running in the background to keep your custom lighting. All that sort of stuff are saved to the keyboard itself, alongside the macros, of course. So they work without the software active, which I really appreciate. The interface itself is clean and easy and simple to use. Nothing fancy, nothing heavy, nothing convoluted and clumsy like so often can be the case with these pieces of software. It just gets the job done and I appreciate that too. So, end of the day. Excellent first impression for the glorious GMMK10 keyless. Very confidence inducing, a great value compared to other similar options from reliable brands and with hot swappable switches. So yeah, I think I would happily recommend it. I might do a follow-up six months down the road or something to tell you how I've been going on, but I don't feel like it'd be necessary. It feels like this is a stable keyboard that's just going to keep being what it is now for quite some time. Although I have been told Gator and Switches don't quite have the same lifetime as Cherry MX Switches, but we're still talking in the order of tens of thousands of clicks, so I don't know if that's going to be a problem for me. And even if it is, I can swap them out. But do stay tuned for the next video because I will be making this very keyboard a little bit fancier with some new keycaps that show off the lighting a bit better. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you're on the hunt for a keyboard, I can and will recommend the Glorious. Thank you, as always, to the patrons whose names are scrolling up above right now. Their above and beyond support is invaluable and very much appreciated. I am Blunty. Thanks for watching and I will catch you next time.